Good morning, neighbors. We're going to sing one of my favorites. It's called Adoration. We've gathered here on holy ground Angels hovering all around For now before Him Oh, magnify Him
It is the day that the Lord hath made. And I saw this scripture, I thought it was really good in First Chronicles. That goes along with a song. And First uh, Chronicles 29, verse 1, Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great, because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now for the house of my God I have prepared with all my might. And he begins to go into the list of all the things that David has prepared. Remember, David was not allowed to build the temple. He was a man of war. He had, uh, there's a lot of bloodshed. But Solomon was going to be a king of peace. Uh, but like he says, Solomon, he's still young and inexperienced. But David is saying, I gave this. The house of God is so important. I have gave willingly of all these things, of, of these treasures, because is not just a house that I can live in. It is the house of God. Like he says, for the house of God I've prepared with all my might. And today as we go to service, we wonder how much do we prepare with all our might to enter into this house you know, the, where God dwells, where he would meet with his people. You can say, well, he meets me anywhere. That is true. But there is a reason why he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. When you all come together, have you prepared with all your might? Or is it just some tradition that you have that I just go every week because it's what I do? Uh, and I like it because in verse 6, David, you know, when here's the king, he's leading by example, his excitement, his, I have prepared with all my might. Then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the officers over the king's work, offered willingly. It was not something that was required, you know, like you better do this or, you know, the king's going to kill you or look down on you. He's, they offered willingly. And we go into service so often with kind of rotten attitudes saying, well, if they sing the song I like or if they do this or if they do that. But we have to offer willingly and to give with all our might. You know, if, if no one else does it, like David, I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to do it whether other people join me or not. Then all these others join in, and that's uh, – in verse 9, then the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced greatly. You know, when he sees all these people's attitudes, we come in sometimes with such terrible attitudes. You know, well, this person, that person, this person said this, this person does that. Well, this is probably what's going to happen, and I'm not even going to be happy now because of what might happen. And no wonder... You don't feel the presence of God like you should because he's really looking for a willing offering and he's looking for someone who's giving it with all their might. Uh, and so I want to continue reading and because then in verse 10, Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? You know, he's, I like this because David is, because he's saying, for all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. He's, he's saying, what, have I, what am I offering to the Lord that he has given me? You know, I mean, he's really, this is such a humble attitude. Lord, we gave willingly of all the things we had, but you're the one who gave them to us in the first place. So who am I that I can even enter your presence and just, you know, my voice, you gave me the voice. Any skill or talent, the clapping of my hands, the dancing of my feet, all these things came from you, and I'm really just handing back to you what you've given me. In verse 15, for we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me and the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. 
And now with joy I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the tent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart toward you. I give my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build the temple for which I have made provision. That is some of the most beautiful scripture in the Bible. We're talking about the glory of God and how, Lord, all that we have is yours anyways. We're just returning what you have given us. And we give you praise and we meant... We want to present our bodies a living sacrifice. It's the temple of the Lord, and we don't want to uh, neglect the coming together of worshiping in spirit and in truth. So God bless you all and help us to be thankful this day and worship with all your might. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.